Here is my quick take why NEO is making a NEO phone to increase the chances of competing in an EV ecosystem which Huawei will take over. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, we have such threads here where people talk about, you know, the functionalities of NEO phone, like you can open the car and introducing NEO links or, um, you know, shared processing power and being able to play games, but all of that doesn't really matter. So forget about any of the technical aspects about Neo Phone. It's also really not about the sales volume here. This is a kind of a defensive move by Neo on a strategic level. This is coming from top-down management. This is not sort of a, a Neo business unit creating this. This is against competition like Huawei here. And Huawei with the Hongmeng OS, they have the best operating system in my views today in any car out there. And this might be a big threat and disruption for maybe first just a Chinese EV ecosystem, but possibly also globally, maybe not in the West, but in some other countries like Southeast Asia, where I think Huawei, Harmony OS or the Hongmeng OS, they can get up to 30, 40% of um, the car um, segment here, uh, where this operating system, which is fluent, um, great design, uh, great capabilities, this will be running on the cars. And what Huawei as a smartphone manufacturer has, of course, is the interaction between the device, the smartphone and your car. So what NEO is trying to establish here is kind of to wall themselves off against this competition and to kind of, you know, play a role in a world in which certainly the smartphone and the car become so immersive and interconnected seamlessly, uh, where, you know, the, the OS, the operating system really is at the core of what you can do. So in the end for NEO, it's about creating an alternative that is owned by NEO itself and to make the experience go beyond just the car. You know, the digital assist like Nomi, they need to take it out of the car. They need to also get in other um, parts of the life of the user because Huawei certainly owns all of that already today and they are going into the car. And there is another puzzle piece of that which Neo already sees today and where Huawei is also at the forefront in my point of view which is consumer grade Adders technology that is closer and closer to level four, maybe at some point level five, that means handoff self-driving. And Huawei is the silent leader. They're not talking too much about it in China, um, contrary to what Tesla is doing in the West, but they have substantial advancements there. And this will be also in combination with the smartphone and the smart car. Um, you know, that's where the future is going. You don't want to have necessarily all of the stuff happening just on the central screen on the display. So that's what Neo is seeing as a strategic um, a threat here where they need to respond and smartly they have done so. I think it's a really good move and I feel really this will fall on the foot of some of the legacy automakers for sure but maybe even some of the uh, you know even Tesla or some other smart EVs uh, that are not doing this and it's therefore a way to secure future market share in this rapidly evolving EV industry in China and NEO might have a good chance and actually also bringing that global with that global approach being based on an open Android system. And that might be actually an advantage even to what Huawei can come up with. We'll see how that will evolve. But that's my view why I think it's actually worth the investment and a smart strategic move. Let me know what you think about it. Still skeptical or not. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.